Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful to you, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this in the future. Not all TVs are the same. LCD TVs have to use backlights, but OLED pixels emit their own light. That's why only OLED bends and rolls. Only OLED is razor thin. Only OLED allows for perfect black and intense color. Some say LCD TVs are just as good. That's simply impossible. OLED creates a stunning picture. Other TVs are dull by comparison. Once you see OLED with your own eyes, you'll understand. There's nothing like an LG OLED television. See the light. Hey everybody, Caleb here, and today we're reviewing the LG C9 OLED. I know a lot of you have been eagerly anticipating this review. We're excited to do it. And don't you worry, we're also going to be comparing it to the LG C8 from last year. So first off, if you haven't seen our unboxing and basic setup video for this TV, definitely check that out. You can click the little link right up here. We go through all the basics of setup. We take a look at how the stand is different and some of the user interface differences. Today, we're going to dig a little bit deeper. There's a lot different from last year's C8 OLED, and most of it is internal. So let's go through that real quick. Okay, so one of the biggest differences for this year, and this is big news for TVs in 2019 in general, LG has actually incorporated full spec HDMI 2.1. Now you video nerds out there know what that means. For those of you who don't, there's really two big features that come along with this new HDMI spec. Don't worry, you don't need new cables, but you are gonna need some new equipment to take advantage of most of it. The first thing that people are gonna be excited with this new HDMI 2.1 is variable refresh rate. That brings this closer than ever to a computer monitor. So now we're looking at the possibility of this being a legit gaming monitor. When the new PS5 and the new Xbox come out, we expect them to support variable refresh rate. We do expect them to use HDMI 2.1, and that's gonna allow all kinds of interactivity between the console and the TV. Most importantly though, you get that variable refresh rate, so everything always looks smooth. The other part of HDMI 2.1 is EARC. Now, if you're familiar with ARC or audio return channel, that means you can connect, say, a soundbar or AV receiver to the TV, and it'll actually pipe the sound down through the HDMI cable to those audio pieces, and you can get TV sound out through your soundbar or big surround sound system. That's great. With EARC, everything gets bumped up several notches. So now you can get full-on Dolby Atmos uncompressed sound through HDMI 2.1 down to your devices. This makes the connection and interoperability of those devices way easier and it's gonna sound a lot better. That's always been a pinch point for ARC. There's a few other things about the new EARC that you might wanna know about and we have an article for that. You can find that in the link below. The last word on HDMI 2.1 is really, this is built for the future. So it's gonna allow all kinds of high bandwidth, super, super rich video to be passed through HDMI to the television. It really opens up a whole bunch of new stuff, none of which we have yet, which speaks to the future proofing of this TV. You can buy this TV now and know that it's gonna be able to take care of all kinds of new features in the future. The next important feature that is new for this year is LG's new Alpha 9 Gen 2 processor. So the processing, as we've discussed before, is the most important part for any TV. You can take a wonderful OLED panel like this, find it in another TV, and if the processing isn't as good, the picture quality is not gonna be as good. So for the Alpha Gen 2 processor, it's doing a couple of key things that are brand new. The first is this deep learning AI stuff. So the idea there is that LG has used artificial intelligence to analyze a huge database of images. It gets really down to the pixel level so that it can understand it's looking at a bird right now or a dog. It knows a dog from a horse, from a cat, right? And then it knows that there are certain aspects of that animal that it's going to want to hone in on to clean up the picture. You know, a dog's nose tends to look a certain way. There's a certain amount of texture there. The fur, the hair, that's a lot of fine detail that you want to render correctly. And the reason that LG is doing this is because when you have a really pristine source like a USB file, 
style that's very, very uncompressed and very pretty on its own, it's always gonna look great. It's gonna look great at the store, but when you get the TV home and you're using your 720p cable box, um, or maybe you're streaming at uh, low resolution rates, there's a lot of different aspects there. You've got over the air broadcast as well. That's a lot of variance in different quality, right? So the Alpha 9 Gen 2 processor attempts to take that image, no matter what the quality, no matter what the source, and make it look as good as it possibly can. One of the ways it does that is it very successfully eliminates banding. So say you're watching something on Netflix and there's a big wash of gray or blue. What you'll notice, especially in like sunset scenes, for instance, there's all these bands of color, and that's because it's a low bitrate signal. So LG takes its powerful processor, runs it through, and basically eliminates those kind of artifacts. And the end result is a very clean, pristine picture. Here's a feature that I was not expecting, but I'm really excited about. Okay, you know TVs sometimes have these brightness sensors where it tries to judge the room and how bright it is, and then it boosts the brightness of the TV to match. Or conversely, if you shut off the lights, then it reduces the brightness so it's not just beaming at you in a dark room. LG has a version of that that has been greatly improved. So instead of just raising the brightness or lowering the brightness depending on the room conditions, it actually alters the curve of the brightness. So it retains highlights uh, in HDR scenes. It maintains color saturation the way it needs to. It's not just moving the brightness, it's moving the whole picture settings, if you will, up or down so you get the best picture quality no matter what the ambient look is. Now, if you're a purist and you only watch this in a dark room, you can defeat that. But I think for a lot of people who are worried about using this TV in a bright room, don't. It can get plenty bright. And use that feature because it's gonna make sure you're getting the best picture quality you can no matter what's going on around you. Now you know OLEDs are thin. That's one of the greatest things about them. You don't have a backlight, there's no muss, no fuss in the back, but I swear this is even thinner than last year's. The profile on this TV is absolutely stunning. Whether you wall mount it or put it on a stand, people are going to be amazed when they see it. It's even thinner than this LG V30 phone and that's one of the thinner phones out there. Here's the problem with thin TVs. The thinner they are, the thinner they tend to sound. There's really not a whole lot of room for speakers. Here's what LG has done to address that problem. So they have built speakers into the base of the TV here and then they fired down into the stand which sort of acts as a scoop or a waveguide to force the sound out towards you. It works pretty well. There's not a whole lot of bass to the sound but it is loud and clear without distortion. And that processor I was talking about before also processes the audio. So it's taking Dolby Atmos sound signals when it gets it and processing it so that you get a good approximation of what Dolby Atmos might be. It's not like you're gonna hear things swirling around you, but you do get a good sense of the movement of objects on the screen. It's a decent solution, but you can do better. I would recommend at least a soundbar for this television, although if you're gonna stand mount it like we have it here, there's not a whole lot of room for it, so keep that in mind. You might wanna have a place to put that soundbar because right in front of the TV is not gonna be a good idea. Or you can take advantage of one of the coolest new features of this TV, which is WISA compatibility. Now, it doesn't come with it built in, but you can add a dongle from LG that turns this into a wireless home theater giant. Basically buy a set of WISA compatible speakers. Klipsch makes them for instance, and I do believe they're gonna forge a partnership with Klipsch so that you can buy it all at the same time. These wireless speakers, you just plug them into the wall. It sets itself up and it sends the sound signal wirelessly, so you don't have to plug in speaker wires, you don't have to calibrate, it all just takes care of itself. And that's super exciting for home theater enthusiasts that are struggling with the idea of having a receiver and speaker wires and all that other mess. So that's the downside of this design, but otherwise, I really like it. I mean, first First of all, this low slung look is super, super classy. Uh, this is a metal stand that uh, also feels really great and it serves its purpose well in that it keeps this uh, TV very, very steady. Uh, there's not a whole lot of room for wobble here. Okay, so let's look at the user experience, specifically with WebOS. You guys know I'm a fan, uh, but things have gotten even better. So first of all, you might notice that the uh, nav bar down here has gotten a little bit shorter. It's not taking up as much of the screen and that's so it can pop this up. So anytime you uh, hover over an app like Netflix or Amazon Prime or even YouTube here, it'll pop up this second ribbon and give you suggested content or have you start from wherever you last watched. So for instance, Netflix, 
Um, I was watching Our Planet recently. I can go straight back to that if I want to, or I can pick something out of the Trending Now section. I can also switch a profile from right here as opposed to doing it directly in uh, Netflix, which shortens the distance between me and the content I want to watch. Now, it doesn't work for all apps. Uh, Hulu, for instance, it just doesn't work for that. Um, and I'm not too sure to what degree it's gonna work with uh, live TV apps like Sling TV and PlayStation View, but that's something that can always be developed. One other thing I like, uh, you can order these tiles as you want to by just clicking on them and then moving them around. But a new feature that I think is really clever is this intelligent edit. So if you click on edit here, it's gonna take a look at the apps that you use the most and will automatically order them for you. Now, I personally like to order my stuff the way I want it, but I think this is great for people who don't even know how much they use various apps to kind of clear the clutter with one click. Here's another new addition. It's called the Home Dashboard. If we click this, this is a great place for you to sort of manage your TV. So you can manage your different inputs, rename them if you want to, put them in a different order. And here's another slick addition is the Home IoT devices. So you can add your Ring doorbell, your smart locks, any your Amazon Echo speaker. All of this can be uh, added right in this area and accessed instantly. Um, it makes managing your IoT devices, your smart home devices, a whole lot easier. I covered this in our unboxing and basic setup video, but I do want to cover it here just in case you don't see that. You have a lot of options for a picture mode. Normally I would start at cinema, but that's not necessary here. Uh, there is a Technicolor Expert mode. Uh, this is fully customizable, but it is designed by the folks at Technicolor. Um, it's very similar to the cinema setting. And then you have ISF Expert Bright Room and Expert Dark Room. I think these two are the most valuable to people. Uh, if you're watching in a bright room and you don't want to have that adaptive brightness control on, like I talked about earlier, pick bright room uh, if you tend to watch during the day and pick dark room when you're watching at night. Um, it's a subtle difference, but it's definitely very meaningful. As for picture quality, folks, no surprises. I love OLED, always have, probably always will, and it comes down to black levels over and over again. Contrast is built on black levels, and OLED does it best. You really get amazing HDR performance out of this TV. It is plenty bright to do battle with almost any room, and it's always gonna look rich. The color, out of the box, fantastic. Those ISF and Technicolor modes really dial it in. Now you can hire a calibrator to make some very fine adjustments and get it to a spec that is right along lines with what Hollywood wants you to see when you're watching their content at home. But for most people, right out of the box, this TV looks far and away better than anything they've ever had before, unless they're replacing another OLED, of course. Now, improvements over the C8 of last year, we still need to put things side by side and take a deeper dive on that. What I can tell you though, is that the differences are going to be subtle. They're gonna be little things. I do appreciate the fact that we're seeing less banding with this TV. I think there's a little bit more retention of highlight detail in HDR scenes. Uh, that's something that LG handles a little bit differently than Sony. So if you're comparing a Sony versus LG OLED, there's some differences there too. And hey, guess what? We're gonna make that video as well. On the whole though, outstanding picture quality. Every time I turn this TV on, I'm reminded about why I like OLED so much. Now. If you're concerned about burn-in, and I know a lot of you are, take a close look at how you use your television. Fact of the matter is, LG and Sony are not seeing rampant return rates on their TVs. Of course, most of them are only three to five years old. But you'd figure some of those original OLEDs would be causing some problems right now. So if return rate is any indicator, burn-in is really not a big deal for the vast majority of people. But I do get emails from people saying, hey, you're off the mark here, I got burn-in. Well, I don't really know how you use your TV. I do know that if you watch the same uh, sports station or uh, you know TV news station for long periods of time every single day for more than say three or four hours, like, yeah, you're probably gonna run into problems. And if that's the case, then the OLED isn't for you. But even for gamers, unless you have a static HUD and you're playing that game all the time for hours on end, probably not gonna be a problem. I would definitely recommend this TV 
for gamers, so long as you're not in the extreme use case scenario. Look, these guys do a lot to sort of pixel refresh and make sure everything burns at the same uh, degree so that the TV looks uniform and even for years and years to come. I definitely think you're gonna get a good five to seven years out of a TV like this at least before it's starting to show any signs of age. And really TVs aren't made to last much longer than seven years anyway. I know we used to keep them forever. It's a little bit different now. On the whole, picture quality, excellent. I can't recommend it highly enough. The LG C9 is an outstanding TV. I love it. Every time I turn it on, amazing. It's great. But how does this stack up against the LG C8? What are the core differences there? And should you buy the C8 since it's so much less expensive than this TV right here? Well, I would say it comes down to future proofing. If you really want the most future proof TV you can get right now, the LG C9 is it. It's got full spec HDMI 2.1, and with that comes EARC, and then you also get the variable refresh rate, which I think is a big deal to gamers. Then you get the more recent version of the Alpha 9 Gen 2 processor, which makes some subtle differences, but again, subtle can be meaningful, and it definitely is in this case. It cleans up the picture a little bit more, and the AI that's in the TV is designed to help you get to the content you want to watch faster and give you a better overall sound experience. The interface has been improved, so the WebOS is a little bit fancier than it was before. Old WebOS was great, this just happens to be a little bit better. And in terms of picture quality, we're looking at very comparable picture quality here. Uh, I think that there are some little improvements here. I also love the fact that LG is always letting you know that you're getting the best picture, whether you're getting Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos or HDR or Hybrid Log Gamma. I even saw that pop up while watching a YouTube video. It lets you know exactly what you're getting all the time, which is fantastic. So on the whole, outstanding television. I think LG knocked it out of the park. Once again, the LG C9 OLED TV is absolutely worth a look. And if you want the latest, the greatest, and the most future-proofed, this is the TV to get.